In this video, we're going to go over how to prove some trigonometric identities. We're going to use known trigonometric identities to prove or disprove a given identity. Let's look at a problem like this. Verify the identity cosine x minus secant x equals negative sine x tangent x. So what we'll need to do is, using our known identities, prove or disprove that this is also an identity. Remember, an identity is something that is true no matter what values I plug into for my variables. So, one thing I like to start off with is always putting a question mark over that equal sign. If I'm trying to verify the identity, I don't know if this is in fact equal, and that's what I'm trying to figure out. Since I don't know if this is equal, the additive property of equality and the multiplicative property of equality, that's when we add things to both sides of an equal sign or multiply the same thing on both sides of the equal sign, those we can't use. We can't add and subtract things from either side of this equal sign. Why? Well, because we don't know if this is in fact equal. So you can't use these properties of equality unless you know that that equal sign is in fact valid. So what we'll need to do is look at each side of this equal sign, or the, we're not quite sure if this is an equal sign, separately. Let's first look at the left hand side of this equation. I'm going to rewrite secant as 1 over cosine. Remember that's our reciprocal identity. Secant is equal to 1 over cosine. Once I've done that, well I can't combine those unless I get a common denominator. So again, if I have one fraction, I make everything fractions so I can clearly see what's going on. My LCD will be cosine x, so I'll rewrite cosine x over 1 as cosine squared x over cosine x. I've multiplied the numerator and denominator by cosine x. Now I can go ahead and do the subtraction for, of my numerators, and I end up with cosine squared x minus 1 over cosine x. Well, if I go back and remember my trig identities, one of my Pythagorean identities involves sine squared x and cosine squared x. That is, when I added them together, they equaled 1. Let's look at this a little closer. I want something that looks like cosine squared x minus 1. Is there anything I can do to my sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1 to get one side of the equal sign equal to cosine squared x minus 1? Well, let's see. I could subtract cosine squared x from both sides, and then I would end up with sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. And that's close, but not quite what I need. What I need is, well, I need 1 minus cosine squared x multiplied by negative 1. And if I do that to both sides, then I get negative sine squared x equals negative 1 plus cosine squared x, or if I want to rewrite that so it exactly matches, what I have, I see that cosine squared x minus 1 simply equals negative sine squared x. Knowing that, I can go back to my problem and I'll replace cosine squared x minus 1 with negative sine squared x. Alright, I think I've done everything I can to my left hand side of the equation. So now let's work on the right hand side. Again, I won't multiply both sides by cosine x or anything like that because we can't use any of our equality properties because I'm not sure if these are equal or not. But I can recall that tangent x was sine x over cosine x. That was my ratio identity. Doing that, if I replace tangent x with sine x over cosine x and go ahead and multiply that, then I find that the right hand side ends up equaling the left hand side. They're both equal to negative sine squared x over cosine x. So this identity is true. And this is how you'll solve any types of problems like this. You'll look at each side separately and see if there's anything you can do to manipulate using our trigonometric identities to get the left hand side and the right hand side equal. And if they are not equal, if you cannot get them equal, then the identity would be false. And there we've had an example on how to prove trigonometric identities. Again, we'll use our trigonometric identities that we know already to try to prove additional ones.